Hey everyone, welcome to the Fargo 3D Printing Show today. Uh, Jake Clark, John Schneider, we got a, we got a full uh, podcast uh, today. We got a bunch of different topics we're gonna cover. Uh, we're gonna start out with type A machines. We're gonna go into a question that we got on one of our YouTube channels. Um, well, our YouTube channel, not one of them. Um, about the Fabricator Mini. We're gonna talk about Tommy, uh, Tiny Boy, not Tommy Boy, uh, Tiny Boy. Um, and then the Micro 3D, and then that's gonna be kind of uh, today's podcast. So. Um, we're gonna start out with type A. John, tell us why we have a giant traffic cone sitting on our uh, desk. So this is a traffic cone that was printed by one of type A machines, new 3D printers. So they have the, type A machines has been around for a few years now. They came out with the series one, which was a laser cut 3D printer. And then last year they came out with the series one 2004 edition, which really amped up what the printer was capable of. I think it increased the build size a little bit. It just looks like a much more professional 3D printer. And we, we actually had a, a series one in here and we we're pretty happy with the print quality, but now they've come out with the series one 2015 edition and the Series 1 Pro. The difference between the 2015 edition and the 2014 edition, they've helped make some parts more rigid, so it's a more accurate 3D printer. You get more reliable 3D print results. And uh, the Series 1 Pro adds a heated bed and features like a built-in camera. So the cool thing about the Series 1 is that it has a 12 by 12 by 12 inch build volume. All of this print was done at one time. And one of the big things that we, that we see um, as, as a difference in print quality between the Series 1 2014 and the Series 1 2015 edition is just the surface quality. The 2014 edition had some, I, it, it was called almost like a corduroy effect. So it, they had some resonance going on. So if you had a curved surface, it would be more of a rough texture to it. But the 2015 edition, they've made it more rigid so they don't have as much resonance. And so you don't have that same issue. So they've really, really improved the print quality on this it's so a we're, beautiful we're, part yeah really excited with how with how well it turned out and the top surface finish is another thing that is really good on this so we've seen some printers where the top surface finish isn't perfectly smooth or it'll be smooth for small por small portions of it but you have a pretty large i mean you have a pretty large area here and it is perfectly flat perfectly smooth so really excited to see uh see how that comes along i know um, I think the Type A Series 1 Pro is starting to ship right now for the people that pre-ordered it, but they've been experiencing a lot of demand. So the, I think their, their current shipping window is about four weeks from now is when they're going to have their, the majority of their stock and really, really be pushing this out. So it's really cool to see a print on this machine before it's released. And I mean, I'm very encouraged by the print quality. Yeah. So I, I mean, that's pretty much it for the Type A, uh, the Type A machines print. And then... So that brings us to a question from uh, Jake. What was the what was the commenter's name? Yeah. So my computer decided to refresh my tablet. Uh, so Ryan Mayfield, uh, thanks for sending your question. Uh, you know, we you wanted us to talk about the mini fabricator. Um, so the fabricator mini is what we're going to talk about. The same thing. Um, so it's actually a project derived from Tiny Boy, which was out of the, uh, uh, it, it was supplied or supported by Hong Kong's Creative Open Tech Association. Um, and what it is, is so the Fabricator Mini is a small, uh, low cost 3D printer. It's a 179.77. It's the lowest uh, 3D printer retail price. Yeah, and it's kind of it's it's kind of funny how they ended up pricing it because the Tico 3D <clears throat> Launched or you know, they launched their Kickstarter and I think their price was 179.97 and so This the fabricator mini is 20 cents less expensive now. There are some differences For example, the fabricator mini is a kit built 3d printer So yes. this is a perfect example of the printer being the project and that's what it was designed for yes Yep, because what the idea is is to get kids more involved with this so um, if you go to tinyboy.net, that's the website of where this project kind of kind of came about. And really, what what they're after is to get kids engaged with this. This is something where you know a school could buy 50 of them and have one at each computer station in the lab. Um, then the student learns about 3D printing by building it. So they build all the you know it's laser cut uh, components. It's a Bowden style extruder. So mm -hmm. um, so they put all these different components together and then. They learn about okay, how do you build it, and then what uh, uh, what is three D printing. So then they learn three D printing after that. So then they can still print projects afterwards. But really, the main focus of this is like John said, the printer is the project, not uh, 
right. got the parts coming off of it. Yeah, so this is something where you'd have an entire semester around, here's how the 3D printer actually works. Here's yep. how the controls work. Here's how the motors drive everything. Here's how the elements are heated. Um, and like Jake mentioned, it is a really small 3D printer. I think the build area is... It is uh, 80 by 80 by 80. Millimeters. millimeters. So that's about 3.14 inches in all dimensions. So, I mean, you're not gonna be able to print large parts in this, and having that smaller build size means that you can still turn out pretty accurate parts. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a, there's a couple different f um, videos online that you can go take a look at. The parts actually look pretty nice. Um, there's a video on there of uh, Hobby King is the one that is offering this machine right now. Mm -hmm. um, and side note, Hobby King, you guys got a, you got you guys got a neat website. I, I like I like everything. <laughs> I need to go back on there and, and shop around for some RC stuff. But um, so Hobby King has has uh, a bunch of different ones in stock right now. Clear and orange is what they have for colors. I know that there is some that are green out there. Um, so they have a video of it printing. I mean, the, the software looks pretty simple. Yeah, it uses uh, uh, uses Repetier host. So pretty common, uh, pretty common slicer. Yeah. So um, the, the one thing that's kind of interesting is, is the build plate doesn't come out. Um, and it actually moves to the side similar to what the Lulzbot Mini does where it moves to the front to say, hey, here's your part. This moves to the side. It doesn't come all the way out, so it, it can be some, it looks like it might be a little bit of a bugger to get some of your parts off the build plate. Um, but uh, for you know a hundred and eighty dollar machine, um, I think it'd be a really neat project for students to get involved. So if you like, if you have an electronics class or a uh, um, design course like what I had in high school, um, you know each each student has their CAD software. Each student has like their little kit of electronics. Same kind of thing with this: is each student would have their own kit, and then they could build it. And then you could even turn it into, hey, at the end of the semester, the kid buys the buys the kit um, or it, and I mean, takes it home. Or it's something like I could see uh, I could see private schools like it's just part of the course. I mean it's it's course part fee. of the yeah part of the course fee. So I mean that's pretty cool. And then so to contrast to contrast that small printer, we also have the uh, the micro 3D printer yes. by M3D. So this is another small 3D printer, uh, more expensive price point. I think it's uh, what is it 349 for uh, for the for the printer. But this ships completely assembled. So uh, M3D had a very successful Kickstarter campaign a while back, mm -hmm. and they're they're now shipping their printer. So this is a perfect example of one of the companies that does know what it's doing when they're doing a Kickstarter. They actually are delivering on the promise of their printer, and the build area on this is about uh, what is that, Jake? I think the build area is about four. So it actually is a stepped build volume. It's kind of it's kind of interesting. So the bottom build volume is actually right around four inches. Yeah, so I think it's um, I think it's just over four inches by four inches, and that's for the first two point nine inches in your z axis, and then after that I think it's three point two by two point nine. It's there. something like that. We don't I don't know the exact numbers off the top of my head, but it does have a smaller build volume for the top part. But the cool thing about the M three D is ships completely assembled. Um, I think it has either assisted or automated bed leveling and uh, and and z axis or you know the the height yeah. sensor. <clears throat> so oh. it's uh, 113 millimeters by 100. So if if pretend the machine's sitting here looking at you, so it's got 113 by 109 by 116, but 74 millimeters high is when it goes down to uh, 91 by 84. So it it has a little bit of a step in there. Um, so really in inches. That is 4.4 by 4.3 by 4.6, and then a 2.9 uh, height before it goes down to th down to 3.6 and 3.3. So, a little little kooky with that, but um, you know this thing is tiny, like the like the um, um, Fabricator Mini. So, I mean, it's we we were watching a couple different videos where the guy reached in with his hand and his hand was as big as the machine yeah, almost well, because the overall size of the entire printer is is just over seven inches by seven inches by seven inches so this is a printer that would fit very easily on a desk um so this is a little bit different well it's actually quite a bit different from the uh what was the name of the other printer uh the fabricator mini yeah so it's different from the fabricator mini in that the micro 3d printer is more closed i don't know if it's closed source but i do know the slicer that it uses you just don't have as many features available to change because they're trying to make this as easy and simple to use where they're trying to make this be more of a tool and then you use the printer on your projects instead of the printer itself being a project. Yeah, so think of the micro 3D printer as the project, the printer's the project, where this, you're printing projects with it. 
So that's kind of kind of how how this one works. And the filament actually goes inside this. So you actually take the build vault build plate off, and then the filament sets inside of it. Um, and then you put the build plate back down. It looks like they're using something similar to a uh, a build tack surface. Um, we're, we're, we we don't necessarily know. It doesn't really specify either tack surface, but it looks very similar to a build tack surface. So I would be surprised if it's if it's not. Um, I know that there um, some of the people have been having some some warpage issues um, that we've seen, but rafts can help that, and helper discs can help with uh, warping as well. Yeah, and maybe even a different build plate surface. I mean, I'm sure you can put yeah. something else on top of it. You could use blue painters tape, gaffers um, tape, hairspray. Yeah, so use definitely, the same tricks. definitely did di um, a bunch of different options out there. The cool thing is, 3D printing is getting more accessible, and the price is coming down for a lot of these smaller 3D printers. Now, you're not going to be doing professional grade stuff. You're not going to start a business around printing stuff off with one of these smaller printers. I mean, unless you're just printing keychains and that sort of thing. But it's good for learning 3D printing, for getting familiar with it. So when you start working with the bigger, more capable machines, you have a better understanding of how 3D printing and the whole process works. It's a stepping stone. Yeah. Definitely, definitely a stepping stone. Yeah. But I think that really wraps it up for this week. Uh, yeah. We talked about the Type A machine. Uh, the Series 1, kind of the changes that they're making, and then we talked about the two smaller 3D printers, and um, again, Ryan Mayfield, thank you for the question. Yes. If anyone else has questions, just leave them in the comments on the YouTube video, or shoot us an email. We love having new things to talk about, and we love things being able that, to... Uh, things that you care about. Yeah, things that you want to hear, hear us talk about, and, and kind of your opinions. Yeah. So or on our be, opinions on your topics. Right. But on behalf, on behalf of myself, John Schneider, and Jake Clark, we want to thank you for watching or listening to the Fargo 3D Printing Show. If you haven't already, please subscribe to us on YouTube or on iTunes. If you want to connect with us on social media, we're on all the big, all the big networks, Facebook, Google+, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, YouTube. So again, on behalf of both of us, thanks for watching. Hey everyone, welcome to the Fargo 3D Printing Show. Jake Clark and John Schneider today. Um, we got a, a full, full podcast. A full, a full, a full podcast. <laughs> All right, let's wow. start over. <laughs>